No mai, haere mai, welcome, and warm Pacific greetings. I'm Kate, and in the previous videos, we discussed lifestyle options and strategies to help you manage your long COVID symptoms, some of which include medication and supplement options. In this video, we're going to kōrero about more specific treatment options and hormonal changes, POTS, antihistamines, natural therapies, physio, self-care and supplements. The first one is for the wahine out there. Since having COVID-19, you may have found that you have more perimenopause or menopause symptoms, or your long COVID symptoms worsen around your monthly cycle. When the body is placed under stress, like having a bad viral infection, it's common for hormones controlling your menstrual cycle to be temporarily altered. Some menopause symptoms can be similar to long COVID symptoms, so using our symptom list and tracking tools will also help you make links between your symptoms and your cycle. If you are perimenopausal and think you may also have long COVID, speak to your doctor about your options. Targeted hormone replacement therapy, HRT, may considerably improve your quality of life. Or you can try a natural supplement called Promensal if you'd prefer. For everyone out there, POTS is a common form of dysautonomia where you get a rapid heart rate and your symptoms get worse when you're upright or standing. Video 4 in this series talks about POTS in more detail, including medications that can help, so we recommend watching this. It's an important topic and a condition you can do something about. Some people with long COVID and ME-CFS respond well to antihistamine medications. These help address a histamine imbalance in the body or immune dysregulation associated with post-viral conditions. Watch video 3 for more information on histamine intolerance and mast cell activation disorder. Antihistamines are classed as either H1 or H2 as they interact with different receptors in the body. A combination of both H1, for example loritidine, and H2, for example famitidine, seems to work best for relief of symptoms. Chronic pain is often due to inflammation. Antioxidants that reduce overall inflammation in the body can help to reduce pain, as well as improve long COVID symptoms. There are naturally occurring antioxidants in food that we talk about in video 10 on pain. Boost your antioxidants by increasing your fresh vegetables or make smoothies with added greens, fresh berries or berry powders. We've uh, done work on oxidative stress and MECFS and we've got evidence that oxidative stress is occurring. And so antioxidants are things which can possibly alleviate oxidative stress, but there are a number of different ones and they might be um, helpful in some people uh, individually and, and, and not others. And there's no clinical trials being done on these. These are things like coenzyme Q, mitre Q, N-acetyl cysteine, for example, the precursor to the main antioxidant in the body, glutathione. And if glutathione levels go down in the brain, it's known this can cause the brain to misfunction. LDN, or low-dose naltrexone, is a prescription medication that is shown to reduce inflammation in the central nervous system and therefore reduce widespread pain in people with ME-CFS and fibromyalgia. Patients also report improvements in brain fog. For pain and general well-being, you may get some relief from natural therapies, such as massage, acupuncture, osteopathy, sauna, or romi romi or midi midi bodywork. When we are moving less due to fatigue, our lymphatic system can become sluggish. Massage or lymphatic drainage with an osteo can help get this moving, supporting your overall well-being. I find regular stretching helps relieve tight, sore muscles and improves my brain fog and sleep. Occasionally, when my body needs a more targeted or whole body treatment, I've found osteo, cranial osteo, lymphatic drainage, sauna and acupuncture extremely beneficial. 
one of my strategies was to reduce um, my working hours um, just to take a bit more care, self-care. And um, part of that is, uh, you know, regular massages, um, chiropractor, <laughs> uh, regular gym, swimming, um, just keeping active. Um, eating a bit better, you know, still not eating as well as I should, but um, better than what I was. And, um, and doing meditation, uh, but those strategies are, are working for me at the moment. I think cranial osteopathy has been really helpful for keeping my brain cleared and drained. Acupuncture is my go-to right now, and I'm taking herbal teas, which has been really, really helpful for my breathing. Um, and my Taiwanese physio is probably, right now, God to me, because he's helped me through a lot of things. Acupuncture especially, um, like I have a session every Saturday, and I have needles right through my whole face. <laughs> you name it, I've had a needle there. Um, and then he gives me the special tea to drink, which um, it's probably the yuckiest thing I've ever had, but I've been taking it for probably six, six, maybe eight weeks now. And um, it's actually helping me. And I drink it three times a day. And my energy levels have definitely picked up a heck of a lot. Many people don't think about their breathing. However, how we breathe has a huge impact on our health and well-being. A physiotherapist can help with breathing exercises as well as pain conditions. Unfortunately, long COVID is not recognised by ACC, so it's difficult to access funding for a physio. A doctor's referral through your local health board is free, However, due to the large demand, there could be a significant wait time in some areas. So use the exercises in video three as a starting point. I also have um, some apps that I use on my phone and for breathing, help me to breathe and to remember to take my meds because I have so many meds to take and I have a, a med a pill box to, to, so I remember um, what to do. There's a huge range of supplements out there that could be beneficial for long COVID symptoms. So it can be hard to know what's best to take. They can be expensive too so it's best to tailor your use of supplements with what your body needs. Get some advice from your doctor, a health provider, or see a naturopath, dietitian, or nutritionist. Many people with post-viral illnesses are more sensitive to new treatments, so start with one or two supplements and build from there. This allows you to monitor the difference they're making before adding others. The thing not to do, however, I would say is that if you have 10 things, you're doing 10 things, they can be counterproductive each, each other. So it's not a good way to find something which might be helpful either in a preventative way or in a, in a way in, with someone who has the illness. So really one should be trying one thing and seeing whether this is good and if it's not then put that aside and try something else, trying to do it one at a time, not just piling everything on top of each other. Two key supplements to start with might be magnesium and vitamin C, but let's call it all about other supplements that could be helpful. Magnesium is an important mineral and can relieve muscle pain and cramps. There are many different types, so check for the one that will best suit your needs. Magnesium is best taken at night as it can also help your sleep. Vitamin C is beneficial for immune function and supports the growth and development and repair of all your body tissues. Liposomal vitamin C can be taken in high doses without causing any stomach upset. We highly recommend getting your levels of vitamin D, zinc and B12 checked. Low levels of these can impact your long COVID symptoms. 
While there may be a cost for these tests, it's worth the investment. Vitamin D is actually a hormone, and it's essential for cellular processes in the body. Its anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and neuroprotective properties support immune health, muscle and brain function, and can help reduce pain. Studies indicate that many people are deficient in vitamin D and link high vitamin D levels with an increased ability to fight viruses. Zinc supports immune functions. Those with post-viral illnesses often have an active immune system, so additional zinc can be really helpful. Low zinc levels can also lead to anxiety. Low B12 levels can be associated with fatigue, cognitive problems, balance difficulties, and low blood pressure. B12 is best taken as drops under the tongue or can be given through an injection. Please note that people with post-viral illnesses can benefit from B12 levels much higher than the standard medical recommendation. I have vitamin, take vitamin D3 because uh, I'm not outside and vitamin C. There are further supplements that have helped people with ME-CFS. A full list is available via the link in the video description. However, some of the key ones are NAC or N-acetylcysteine for immune health, coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10 to help generate energy, quercetin as an antioxidant. Finally, if you experience blood clots as part of your long COVID, Studies indicate that natokinase, an enzyme found in NATO supplements, is associated with improvement in heart health and blood clotting. It's available at health food stores, however, we recommend discussing this with your doctor or health provider before taking this. Additional supplementation of vitamin D or zinc when that's recommended, uh, and people can get tested, obviously, blood tests for vitamin D and zinc very easily. Um, in addition to that, there are some very specific supplements that might help with, say, energy creation within a cell, because the virus will co-opt energy from the cell, and in doing so, it can kind of change the cell's energy dynamics and damage that to some degree. And so they found, for example, that um, coenzyme Q10 levels are lower in people who have had COVID and people with long COVID. Um, in a similar vein, nicotinamide riboside, which is a, an NAD precursor. So NAD is another thing that's involved with cellular energy dynamics. That's often depleted in people with COVID and long COVID as well. Nicotinamide riboside, which boosts NAD levels. Um, N-acetylcysteine or NAC, which can boost glutathione. Uh, MitoQ, which is a coenzyme Q10 supplement. And there's one other. And there's not a lot of research on this for long COVID specifically but it's immune supportive, anti-inflammatory, uh, really helps with cognition, reducing brain fog, depression, anxiety, um, and it has a really profound effect on helping to heal brain tissue, and that's lion's mane mushroom. But of course, that's where it, uh, it can be worth, even if it's just a very brief discussion with a very knowledgeable practitioner, um, but even then, you know, sometimes getting a consultation with a practitioner can end up saving someone quite a lot of money in the long term because, you know, I've seen a lot of people taking armloads of supplements and yet even with those supplements included, when I run them through a food analysis, they're still missing essentials. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter what we're taking. You know, all those things under the sun are not going to give us an optimal response because it's the key essential things. Essential means the body needs it because it can't make it, right? If we're not getting that, we're stuck. Um, so it can really help to fine tune that, save a lot of money in the long term. Lastly, it's important we add a note of caution about treatments you might find on the internet. Uncertainty and anxiety can lead to people wanting to try anything to feel better. And we've seen many products and services promoted as solutions that might not be helpful. Be cautious of anyone saying they have a cure and investigate the validity of any product, service or program before spending your hard earned money. 
The information we provide in this video series is either evidence-based, backed by research, or draws on our 10 years of experience working with people with MECFS. I think if you have a chronic illness that you know your body far better than anybody else and you have researched everything because you have time to do that as well and you have specialists who know what they're doing or I have specialists who know what they're doing and hearing cures is really unhelpful. It just feels like a really big burden on me. I didn't try hard enough. In conclusion, use the symptom and tracking sheets to help you work out what is going on for you. Then talk with your doctor or health provider about the symptoms that are impacting you most and discuss possible medications or supplements. If you choose to use supplements, start slowly with one or two Monitor these and build from there. Remember, self-care is also important. Natural treatments can help reduce a number of symptoms and support your general well-being. Nā mihi. Thank you for watching and if you've found this video helpful, please share it. <laughs>